Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be creating a stylized style bunk bed. So I came across a few images a few days ago and I decided to go ahead and make one as well in 3D, a stylized version of a bunk bed. And uh, I got a few images here. So I'm going to be using these images just for reference. Um, the one I'm going to make is not going to be uh, an exact copy, I guess, of one of the uh, images, but it's going to be mostly a combination of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few pieces and I'm going to reuse those to create the entire uh, bunk bed. Uh, mainly the wood pieces are going to be reused across the entire thing, mostly because you don't have to have unique UV models in order to create something like this. You can reuse a lot of the pieces. And then everything else is a uh, really standard simple modeling. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to be reusing a lot of the models. So it's good to get rid of some of the edge loops that aren't really uh, adding anything to the shape. So that's what I'm doing here in this case. Then for the blanket, I'm going to actually extrude that out of the main bed. It could obviously be made separately as well, but in this case, I think it works. It works fine as a separate. I mean, as a part of the actual model. It also saves on poly count as well, if that is something that it's important. So if this was like a game model, it would be important to kind of save on the poly count as well. Although to be honest, this is a relatively low poly model as it is. So I'm going to start the UV before I start to duplicate things, so that it's easier uh, once I start duplicating things. The model is already being UV'd. So it's good to, to try to UV it so that the seams are in areas that are not going to be too noticeable. And then these are the pieces that I want for the final. So the beds, I want them to have different color sheets, uh, which is why I'm going to have them use separate UVs for that. And I'm going to group these, and these are going to be my main uh, model pieces that I'm going to bake in Substance Painter. So I'm going to rename them accordingly uh, with underscore low. And then I'm just going to start to duplicate some of the pieces so, so that I'm reusing some of the geometry here. Like I said, because this is a really uniform wood, I don't think you need to have unique pieces being uh, taking space in the UV space uh, when you can just reuse them. Then this one I'm going to add a little bit of an arc to it. So I'm just duplicating some of the pieces. Like I said, these are going to be sharing the same UV space. This way you don't uh, waste any more UV space than you need, or you don't use any more UV space than needed. So I'm doing uh, what I did in the last video where I created a bridge, uh, which is essentially I'm reusing a lot of the pieces uh, with the UVs. And like I said, this can be done, and this can be done before um, doing the texture, or it can be done after as well. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge all those pieces. And 
and I'm going to offset the UVs on those as well so that when I bake in Substance Painter there is no issue uh, with the UVs sometimes there is uh, but not always I also set my UV uh, my smoothing groups on the model and then I exported my low poly and then I'm just going to duplicate it and get the high poly model uh, which in this case is just I'm just going to bevel some of the edges for the most part and export in sub D mode as well So I'm not going to take this one into ZBrush, I'm going to keep it mostly um, by beveling some edges and exporting in sub-D mode and then just getting some of the details in Substance Painter. So then I'm going to export this to my high poly and then just bake by name uh, by mesh name here in Substance Painter. So you have to make sure you, have, you set that setting for every map uh, that allows you to do that. Which is mainly the curvature, the ambient occlusion and the normal map. And I'm going to use the stylized material that I used in almost all my videos. Uh, if you want to learn how to make it, uh, there's a link in the video description uh, which shows you how to create this material. Uh, but obviously I'm going to be using that and as always I'm going to change some of the settings of it as well. More specifically getting rid of some of the baked lighting and ambient occlusion. And then for the fabric I'm going to add another layer uh, which has just like a pattern on it. And then I'm just going to use one of the uh, blending modes to see what looks good in this case and there's a, there's quite a few patterns here that you can use or obviously you could even import your own as well i'm also going to add another layer to the wood uh, so it's a wood fiber layer and i'm going to rotate it and change the blending mode as well uh, this is just so that there's more detail for the wood as well and it's just it is not just a flat color then for the fabric i'm going to use one of the uh, fabric materials that comes with Optimus painter this is just to add some normal map information on it so that it looks more like fabric and it's not uh, super flat so that it has a little bit of folds and all of that and then for the blanket at the top i'm also going to add a pattern to it And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing with the pillows as well. So that's pretty much it for this model. So like I said, it's just using my stylized material and then just changing some of the settings as well as adding a few layers. I also made the wood just a little bit more shiny as well. So increase the roughness of it. So here's what it looks like in Marmoset 2 back uh, in the render. So if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. 
so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.